Welcome, this is part three. Jesus said, unless you overcome, you're not going to sit on a throne with him. And you won't be able to eat from the tree of life. You will not be able to enter into the holy city. What does that mean? We saw in parts one and two that it simply means to surrender to Jesus and you get your robes washed in the blood of the lamb. And when you wash your, brother, wash your robes in the blood of the lamb, you have overcome. You have overcome. That was tape one. And then in the second one, we saw that the epistle of John said the same thing. He said that in Revelation. And then in his epistle, same author, different book. He says, we become overcomers as soon as we're born again. And we first put faith in Jesus. And then he tells us what it is we have overcome. We have overcome the world and the evil one right at the beginning when we surrender to Jesus. That's when you overcome, when you first come to Christ and you're guaranteed a seat in heaven. Now, this is part three. Now that I am an overcomer already because I've become a Christian, yeah, how do I relate to sin? Am I going to sin anymore or not? Get ready for a shock. John has already told us, and we saw already in the previous teaching, that we are already overcomers when we first put faith in Jesus. We've overcome the world and we've overcome the devil. What does that mean? We don't sin anymore? No way. The whole book, 1 John, is written to Christians who he identifies as overcomers. They have already overcome and he will speak to overcomers and he will tell them, but you're still going to sin. You are fully an overcomer and you're still going to continue to sin. Want the proof? Don't forget, we've already seen that he's called them overcomers. Go back to the previous teaching. Otherwise, this one, you're not going to accept it. Yeah? He's writing to people who have already been identified as overcomers. And this is what he'll say to overcomers. 1 John 1, 8, right up to 2, 1. 1 John 1, 8, right up to 2, 1. Speaking to overcomers, he will say, but if we say we have no sin, we, John, John, the overcomer, including his audience, who has already identified as overcomers. If we, overcomers, say we have no sin, right in the present, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So if any overcomers say they currently have no sin, they're deceivers, the truth is not in them. So overcomers must admit they have sin, but more. First John 1 John 1.9, the next verse. But if we, overcomers, confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Overcomers will have sin. They will not say they don't have sin. They will admit they do have sin and they will confess their sins. But even while they're admitting they've got sins and confessing sins that they're committing, they're still overcomers. That's the good news. Overcomers is my identity. I am an overcomer and I still blow it. Verse 10, and if we, overcomers, say that we have not sinned in the past, we make God a liar and his word is not in us. So overcomers will say, we have sinned in the past, we have sinned in the present, and we go to God in the present and fess up. But we're still overcomers. So my sins, my behavior doesn't change my status, my identity. I am an overcomer who still struggles with sin. And I'm still an overcomer. This is good news, folks. Next verse, chapter 2, verse 1. It's the very next verse. My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. Well, there's the goal. But if anyone does sin, there's reality. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. My goodness. Hey, overcomers, I hope you don't sin. But when you do sin, you better admit you've got sin and you better fess them up. And don't say that you don't have any or that you've never had any. Because you're a liar, you deceive yourself, and the truth is not in you. So overcomers have an identity as overcomers, and they will sin. And you're, and you're still an overcomer. There's a difference between your who and your do. Who are you? My identity. I am an overcomer. That's what I am. Because I've got a new identity. I'm an overcomer. And I'm still going to blow it. But I'm still an overcomer. 
John talks about this change in identity as soon as we put faith in Jesus. We become children of God, overcomers who still sin. Your sin doesn't change your identity in the present or your destiny in the future. Watch this. Remember, he's writing to people who that he has already identified and labeled as overcomers and said, you guys sinned in the past, sinned in the present, and when you do, go to Jesus and, and fess up. But you're still overcomers. Why? Because you've got a new identity. What's this new identity? 1 John 3, 1. Listen. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called the children of God. And so we are. What are we? Not our behavior. We sin. But what are we? Children who sin. What we are is our identity. We are children of God. We are overcomers. We have overcome the devil. We have overcome the world. Then we still sin. Your behavior doesn't impact or change your identity. Your behavior doesn't define you. You're always a son, always an overcomer, and you'll always be blowing it. Your behavior doesn't change your identity. And now we're going to read that your behavior won't change your future destiny. 1 John 3, 2. It's the next verse. Beloved, we are God's children now. Now he's going to talk about the future. Beloved, we are God's children now, even though you're sinning. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be, future, has not yet appeared, hasn't happened yet, but we know that when Jesus appears, we will be like him, because we shall see him as he is. Notice he didn't say, you know, because you're sinning right now, and your children right now, you're going to blow it in the future. You're not going to see Jesus, is not what he said. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see we're going to be there we're going to be there you are in the present a child of god you are in the present an overcomer of the world and of the evil one past tense but you're still going to blow it and when jesus comes we will be there we will be there your sins doesn't affect your present identity or your future destiny to overcome simply means I've washed my robes in the blood of the Lamb. And when that happened, he washed away my old identity. I instantly became an overcomer. I was freed from all my sins. I became a child of God who's going to keep falling and failing and confessing. But when he comes, I'm still a child of God. And I'll be there. And I will see him. That's the gospel of grace. I hope this series has blessed you. Bye-bye.